that based on based on all that is going on, it looks like the Great Depression is rolled into the Great Resignation, is rolled into the Great Recession. Oh, and there is maybe a great reawakening going on at the same time, but there is a great disappointment going on in our lives. And of course, because of the great controversy, I will say we're in a place of great agitation. Great agitation. Never has there been a time in the world when there is a sense of insecurity, heightened insecurity. But you know what? If it is even just insecurity and economic recession, then it would have been cool. But now we have even the foundations, things that we did not think can ever be questioned, being questioned. And it's like, what is going on? Everything is shaken that can be shaken. And that takes me to our text in Psalm 46. You see, David started off by saying, he made a declaration. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to make a declaration first. And I am also starting off with that declaration. As we talk about the great rest, contrasted against the great agitation. God is our refuge. I'm here to declare to us saints of God. God is our refuge and strength. Oh, a very present help in trouble, in agitation. Therefore, we will not fear. Now, what is happening? Though the earth, <laughs> whoa, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. Think about this. That typifies what is going on now. Mountains moving, earth shaking, waters roaring, waters of relationships, waters of people. Things are not as defined as they used to be. Oh, things are so fluid right now. You can choose to be whatever you choose to be. My husband was filling out uh, a, a form for his medicals yesterday, and it came to the place of gender. <laughs> and the list was so long, and we were like, you know what? I think we need to have an urban dictionary to actually fill this form so that you understand what we mean. Because the old Oxford Cambridge Dictionary is not going to work. They have not even found their way in there. And then we have all these earth-shaking experiences of tragedy, of devastation, of bad news that is happening. People dying unnecessarily. Lives just being wasted. Evil riding. And that shows the time of agitation that we are in. You know, and many times it's, it is one thing for things to be happening in the public, but what is going on in our own private lives? I said that we usually have private pain in public panic, private pain in public pandemonium. That is the whole world might be dealing with stuff, but what we are dealing with in our own lives, in our health, in our families, in our work, in our finances, in our mind, is shaking our own earth. A few months ago, I was in so much agitation because the very foundation of what I believe about God was being challenged. Ah, I got to a place where it's like, wow, is there really God? If there is God, is he good? And if he is good, is he great? If he is almighty, all-powerful, and all-knowing, then why is he allowing some things to be happening? Can he not control it, you know? I, I had to go back into those questions. The question of the inconsistencies of God. Let us be real, let us be true, because we can no longer just gloss over things. We know that there are places in the Bible that we don't understand God, true or true. 
I mean, why would God harden, the Bible says, harden Pharaoh's heart and then punish him? It's like, daddy, come on. I can, you are the one who hardened his heart. Now, why are you not punishing him? That doesn't sound right. Yes, I have questions and queries about God. But I have come to a place. It's like, what do I do in the midst of that? Because if the God that I want to hold on to, the God I want to hang on to, that's supposed to be my anchor, is shaky. The Bible says, what will the righteous do? It says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Do you know that that question was not answered? And I have come to give you an answer. So what do the righteous do when the foundations are shaking? When the foundations are no longer what you thought they were in your own private life? When everything that you thought you knew is being queried? Some things that were non-negotiable before are now being negotiated. What do you do? There is so much high unpredictability right now. What do you do? Wow. And that is why in that same Psalm, in verse four, it says, there is a river. There is a river, the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Woo! God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. You know, the New King James Version says that, oh, there is a river in the, that, that makes God the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved and God will help her just at the break of dawn. I want to pause here and proclaim this message on the life of somebody that you are hearing this word right now. It says that God is in the midst of you. God is in the midst of you. And because God is in the midst of you, you shall not be moved. Your help is coming. Your help is coming. What kind of help is coming? You see, I learned this past week, when God helps you, what does it mean? It means that he makes the outcome achievable and getting there easy. That is how he will help you. He will ensure that you get the outcome and then he will lead you and make it easy for you to get there. Somebody, God is telling you today that your help is on the way. And he says that right early. In the midst of your agitation, in the midst of the great agitation that you may have. But let us look at this again. So what does the righteous do when the foundations are moving? What does the righteous do when your hopes are being threatened, when your dreams looks like it's not going to happen? What does the righteous do when what you have relied on, you have banked your life on this thing and then whoosh, like that, it sweeps away just like the water of the ocean right before your eyes. What do you do? Look at what verse 10 says. It says, be still. Can somebody unmute and shout, be still? <laughs> Say it. Somebody be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Hallelujah. That is what the righteous will do. That is the answer to the question in Psalm 11 that says when the foundations are being shaken and being destroyed, what does the righteous do? The Bible tells us, it says, be still and know that I am God. I'm speaking unto somebody today that in that your situation, God said, I will be exalted. In that your circumstance, God said, I will be exalted amongst the heathen. All right, God, it was not a mistake. It could have been in the assembly of the children of God. Okay, but it is the heathen that are questioning and querying. He says, don't worry, my child. 
I will ensure that I will be exalted among the nations. He said, I will be exalted in the earth. Does God have your permission that in your situation, does he have your permission in your situation to be exalted among the heathen? Can you yes. just tell him and say, yes, God. Yes, yes God. use Use my circumstance, use my situation to exalt yourself among the hidden. Use my situation, use my circumstance to exalt yourself in the whole earth. God, you have my permission. Oh, when you give him permission for that, then you are setting yourself up for something great. Hallelujah. 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 He says, be still. Why? Why? Why do you need to be still? There are three things that happen when you are still. Oh, there are three things that happen when you are still. You can read it in that verse. It says, be still and do what? Know that I am God. So the first thing that happens in the place of being still is that you are able to know God. You are able to know God. Ha! Ah, you see, when we are running all over the place, when our mind is busy with emotional turmoil, when our mind is racing with questions, when our heart is pumping with agitation and panic, we cannot know God. That's why it says, calm down, Selah. It says, be still and know that I am God. In quietness and confidence, I'm still going to come to that. But it says, be still and know. What does Daniel say? Daniel says in Daniel chapter, uh, chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11, it says that they, he said they shall, they, they're going to, 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 um, do against the covenant. Look at what this says. It says 32, Daniel eleven thirty-two. 32. It says, and those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flatteries. Talking about agitations. And they that you will corrupt with flattery, but, ah, one of those places where I like the word but. That is in opposite, in contrast. But the people that do know their God shall be what? Shall be strong. Receive strength today. Receive strength in the midst of those agitating situations. He says, they shall be strong. We're not even talking about doing exploits because sometimes we are so battle worn as Christians. Doing exploits is not even what. It's like, look, let me just survive. <laughs> let me just make it. <laughs> let me just know that my child is going to come through this situation. Let me just know that this relationship will work. Let me just know that I will get this job. Let me just know that I will pass this exam. This is the third time. I'm not even ready for exploits like now. I just want to be strong. Am I talking to somebody? Maybe I'm the only one that gets there when I don't really want to do exploits. Yeah, it's good. I just want to be strong. And what God is saying is that when you know me, you will be strong. You will be strong. You'll be able to withstand. You'll be able to stand. So what does, what does being still do for you? One, you are able to know God. And when you know God, you are able to sit because you are still. You see, all the gra gra, and I'm saying this, some of my friends, like Rebecca, may not get what I mean by gra gra. Gra gra means agitation desperation, hustling, hustle, right, right. So, because we think we want to figure it out, and that is one um, phrase that the, our Gen Zers always say, I'm going to figure it out. 
I'm just going to think it through. I'm just going to hustle. But look at what Psalm 110 verse 1 to 2 says. It says, <laughs> and the Lord said to my Lord. Yeah, these are lords talking. These are lords talking. He said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit. Sit thou at my right hand until I make all those agitating situations your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of thine enemies. God says that I will make your enemies your footstool when you sit. He did not say when you run. He did not say when you are jumping, not when you are racing. He said, sit. Tell yourself, sit. Tell yourself, sit. sit. The Bible says that we are seated where? We are seated where? In the heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. He says, sit. Calm down. Take a restful position. Yes, in the midst of the agitation, in the midst of those things that question you and query your God, sit, choose to sit, choose to stop racing, choose to stop worrying and trying to figure it out, how it's going to be, what you're going to do. It says, I will make your enemies your footstool. And then the third thing that happens when you are still is that you are able to receive that power from the Holy Spirit. And that is why in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says that, and it told them, it says, tarry, wait. That is the preceding verse. It said, wait in Jerusalem. Tarry, sit, don't rush off. Don't rush off to check what is on the message, on the WhatsApp message. Don't go and look at what is on the Instagram you know, post that you posted. He says, before you do all of that, wait, ha. wait. Don't get on the phone yet. He says, wait, and you shall receive what power after the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So the power that makes you strong in the midst of your agitation is the power that comes from the Holy Ghost. And that is why in Psalm 23, it says, yea, oh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Though I walk through the midst of agitation and agitating circumstances, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. You are with me. I am sitting with you. I am with you. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He says, thou preparest a table before me in the midst of my agitation, in the midst of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. That is another new thing that I just learned this past week. That when your head is anointed with oil, whatever cup you are holding in your hand will run over. Somebody shout hallelujah. Our problem hallelujah. Is, the problem is that we are so agitated, running. He wants to anoint our heads with oil, but hey, oh, we are just dodging because we are nowhere to be found. We are worrying. We are racing. But he said, be still. Let me anoint you. Let me fill you with power. Be still. And know that I am God. You see, he says that you shall receive power and you will be witnesses. Do you know there's a difference between being a believer and being a witness? You see, a believer is the beginning. A believer is one that agrees with God. A believer is the one that says, God, yes, you are right. God, you are true. 
I believe you, God, that what you have said is great. And yes, you are able to do what you have promised. God, I believe. I believe. That is a believer. But there is a transition that happens when you become a witness. And the, the Holy Spirit comes and makes you a witness. You transition from being a believer into a witness. And what is that? You become an evidence of the living power of God. You are not just believing and agreeing with God. You are the evidence to the world that he is powerful, that he is mighty. He says, look at me. That was what Peter and John said. He said, look at us. Silver and gold we do not have, but hey, we have the name of Jesus. And at the name of that Jesus, rise up and work. You become an evidence when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit because then you receive strength. You become a sign. You become a wonder. People are saying, how is she doing it? How is he doing it? Regardless of what is going on, they just terminated his appointment. Oh, they just fired her. Oh, the child just came and said, you know, you get back to me as a, as a daughter. And I'm telling you, this is something that one of my friends had to deal with. He said, you get back to me as a daughter, but hello, I'm no longer a girl. So just forget you dreaming of walking me down the aisle. From right now, just call me a day, not uh, him or her. Can you imagine what that does to the heart of a parent? But that is the kind of agitations in the real world that we are dealing with right now. But how do you handle that? The power of the Holy Spirit gives you that hope, gives you that strength, helps you to hold up your head because you are able to transition into the place of resting. And I'm going to talk about that. So the Holy Spirit makes you a witness, power to become, power to go through for you to be strong. Okay, Dr. Mrs. Olare, good talk, good talk, great, great. So how do we operationalize this? It's sounding good. Yes, hey, the Holy Ghost has sent me all the way from Stockton to let you know just how to. First, it's for you to understand from Hebrews chapter four, starting from verse one, let us see this rest because we are moving from the great agitation into what the great rest. I am here to announce to somebody that this is the season of your rest. I don't know why God narrowed this down for somebody that yes, you may even have thought that you were rested in a certain area of your life, but there's another one that is starting to agitate you. It says it is a season of your great rest. And how do you experience it? It says, therefore, let us fear, you know, in this King James Version is a little, um, you know, old English, but let us, uh, we'll, make, we'll make do with it as much as possible. Let us fear, meaning let us be aware. Let us be intentional. Don't let us take things for granted. That's what that is saying. It says, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left for us of, entering into his rest that any one of you will come short of it so the first thing is this rest is something you enter into it is something that you enter into and then it goes on to say that for we which have believed do enter into that rest wow so in order for us to enter into that place of rest, that great rest, this season, this era of rest, you have to what? Believe. You have to believe. Believing is the way your mind and your being enters into it because believing, he said, to many as believe, to them give him power. Believing releases the power to become. You've got to trust God. Like some of us said, how do you rest? It's like you hold on 
to the word of God. You've got to count, you have to judge God faithful. He says that whoever comes to God must believe that he is. So you see, for me, when I was in that place of agitation, when my faith was being questioned about God, you know, after a while I said, God, you know, there are so many things I don't know about you. There are so many things I don't understand about you. But you know what? The ones that I know, the ones that I know, I'm going to hold on to it. There are many things about you, God, that does not make sense. But the one that makes sense, I'm going to hold on to it. The rest, I will understand by and by. And David did the same thing. David said, that, look, I have not concerned myself with haughty or mighty things. He said, but like a little child, I am weaned at my mother's lap. That's what God wants us to be. That's trusting. You know, can you imagine that a child does not know all that is going on in the world of the parents, especially a baby? All they know is, this is my food factory. All I have to do is to make sure that my mouth <laughs> latches on to these boobs. Any other thing, I don't care what is happening around. And whatever agitation, whatever crying is happening, they calm down. So we have to believe and trust the heart of God, even when we cannot see his hand. Or when we think that his hand is doing things that we don't understand. That you want to trust the integrity of his heart that says, I love you. I'm routing for you. Look, evil is evil. Evil is evil, and there is no explanation for evil as of the fact that evil is evil. And sometimes we don't understand how evil is until we see it. Unfortunately, it was an election and a vote that our four great-great-grandparents made. They wanted to have the knowledge of good and evil. But when we're in the midst of it, we've got to trust and not apportion the blame of evil on a good God. I hate when death takes a loved one. But I know that it is not God. It is not God. God did not create us to die. So I'm not going to blame God. I'm going to blame the devil. I'm going to blame the evilness of evil. Because in order for you to enter into rest, you've got to be a believer, of course, so that you can transition into being a witness. So very quickly, how do you operationalize rest? How do you operationalize rest? R-E-S-T. You want to take this note down. How do you operationalize rest? When you are in the midst of great agitation, when you're in the midst of great agitation and emotional turmoil, when foundations are being shaken and broken, when things are moving around you that is destabilizing you, for me, what I have found is to return. R is to return and remember. Psalm 116 verse 9 says this. It says, return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Why is it saying return to your rest, O my soul? You see, the thing about our emotional mechanism is that we, our emotions protect us. Our psyche tries to protect us when there's a trigger. So it is like a dog that is barking, that sees a stranger and the dog jumps out and whoop, 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 because there is an unfamiliar presence. But you are the one that will have to tell that barking dog, hey, hey, it's okay. Return to your rest, oh my soul. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Okay, this is nothing for you to worry about. Let us remember the bountifulness of God, how good God has been. Let us remember the last place of your peace. Remember the last place of your peace. Remember the last place of your peace. Remember the last place of your peace, of your peace and return there. 
even when outside agitations want to lure you out. He says, return to your place, to your rest, O my soul. And that is why in Isaiah chapter 30, it says that in rest, in returning and rest, so shall your strength be. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15, it says, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In returning and in rest, so shall you be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Remember, that strength that we're talking about is here again. And you, but you will say, no, 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 no. No, I don't want. Oh, I want to figure it out. No, I want to Google it. No, I want to research it. Oh, I want to talk to this person. I want to talk to that person. Oh, I want to, you know. He says, okay, if that's what you want to do, you won't be able to catch up. But we want to err. We want to return to the last place in your mind. Return to that last place and tell your soul, calm down and remember. Wow. Then the last point, the next one is E, expectation. E, have an expectation. Because if you are just returning and, and resting and you don't have an expectation of deliverance, you're not going to get it. But in Psalm 62, it says that God, oh, look at what it says in Psalm 62. You know, it says that um, my soul waits only upon God for my expectation is from him. You will rest in hope. That is what I is saying. That you know there's going to be a deliverance. There was a time when my little granddaughter was knocking at the door, you know, where her jeep papa was in the bedroom. The door was locked. And, you know, she was knocking, 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 jeep papa, jeep papa. And jeep papa was like, yes, jeep papa, jeep papa. And jeep papa could not come to the door immediately. But she kept on knocking. He, she knew that jeep papa was in that room, but the door was locked. Do you know what my granddaughter did? She just sat down there. It's like, whenever <laughs> you come out, <laughs> you will find me here. Because she had an expectation of deliverance. So have an expectation. Don't think that God has forgotten you. No, he has not forgotten you. He has sent me to remind you today. He says that though the mother may forget her suckling child, he has not forgotten you. You are etched and tattooed on the palm of his hands. Have an expectation of deliverance. Then S is a place of standing and speaking the word of God. The truth of God. Speak the word of God. Speak and stand on the word of God. Let the words of God be stronger than all the thoughts and the raging storm around you. Speak the word. It says that, oh, great peace have they that love their law, thy law. Nothing shall thy enemies move them. You need to stay close to the word. Even when things around you look contrary, if God has said it, believe it. If God has said it, believe it. That is the rock on which you stand. It says, if you build your house on the word, you shall be a rock so that when the storms of life come, you will stand. And then T is you've got to switch on thankfulness. Thankfulness. This is how you rest. Thankfulness. Thankfulness means that, you know, in, in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, be agitated for nothing. I'm using agitation instead of anxiety. It says, be agitated for nothing. Not about anybody's salvation, not about anybody's health, not about anybody's life. It says, be anxious for zero. You have permission to be anxious for zero. The only thing that you can be anxious about is zero. It says, be anxious for nothing. Be agitated about nothing. Be careful, be agitated about but in everything, everything, everything whatsoever. It says, by prayer and supplication. Now, we do prayer and supplication very well. 
Oh, we do prayer and supplication. We know how to ask. Oh, God, I want this. Oh, God, do this. Oh, God, I'm pleading. Oh, God, do this. We know how to pray and supplicate. But look at the power. We thanksgiving. We thanksgiving. We thanksgiving. What that says is that you remember. You look for what God is doing in your present circumstance. You look for the light. Because what the devil tells you in the midst of your agitation is that God has forgotten you. God is no longer working for you. But when you're able to see, hey, look at this. God, I am thankful. Yes, you may not have done this, just like John. You know, John started to doubt Jesus when he was in the prison. He was agitated. He says, are you the one? Are you, are you, look, guy." Are you doing anything about my situation? You know, are you still the one? This was the same John that baptized Jesus, but he was in a crisis of faith. And Jesus said, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the, God, the poor have the gospel. Go and tell John. It may look like I am not doing what he expects me to do, but look around. I am still doing and be thankful for that. Focus on what's strong and not what is wrong. Rest, rest, remember, and return. E, have an expectation of deliverance. Paint a picture of your deliverance. Have that expectation that God will come through. S, speak and stand on the word of God. And T, be thankful. Is there anybody who wants to take that invitation? Because this rest is something that Jesus wants to give you. And that is why in Matthew, he writes it and he puts it there. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Will you take it? He wants to give you, will you take it? Will you take it? I welcome you into your era of the great rest in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Holy Ghost, I pray that for each and every one of us here, whatever it is that is agitating us, oh, that is making us not sleep in the night, that is making our tummy churn, Oh, that giving us palpitations and headaches. Father, whatever area of our life is, it is, we isolate it and we choose to enter into that rest of God. And that you who have said you will fight for us, let us see your deliverance come through. And yes, you have permission that in this current situation, be exalted. Show up yourself as strong and mighty on our behalf. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.